I think there's this narrative that a huge reason why Tannehill is effective is just from play actions. It's because people are so focused on Derrick Henry that things get very much opened up in the play action game. Uh, and so I kind of wanted to just uh, sort of see how much truth there is to that. And so first I'm going to look up some statistics and then I'll look up tape. Uh, so let's start off with the statistics. So what you see on the screen is these are the top seven players in terms of differential from uh, when they had their passer rating for play action compared to their passer rating overall. And just to be clear, also one thing I did was I only counted, I only made you eligible for this list if you were top 10 in passer rating during play action overall, just because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to put somebody on a list who's just really bad at uh, throwing in general, and that makes it easier for them because they're decent in play action. So took that out of there. But anyways, uh, what you're going to notice is that the differential is in the third column. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, Gardner Minshew. He had the biggest uh, play action differential where he only had a 91.2 passer rating overall, but a 133.4 passer rating overall when he was uh, throwing play action. Jameis Winston also had a big differential, uh, and then you get down to Ryan Tannehill, uh, his was next, a pretty big drop-off between two and three, about a 14-point drop-off, uh, you have Drew Brees, who's almost exactly the same uh, in every category of the first three, you know, to have uh, uh, play action were within a point, uh, their overall was just over a point, and then the differential uh, was only .2 apart, so they're almost identical. And to fill up the list, you have Rivers, Wilson, and Cousins. Uh, but what's interesting is that, you know, go back to Tannehill and Breeze. Uh, one interesting statistic between those two is the column all the way to the right. This is play action percentage. On any given snap, how likely were you to run play action? So on any given passing play. Uh, and for Ryan Tannehill, I mean, you know, you look at that, that's pretty high. Compared to Drew Brees, I mean, 29.4% compared to just 14.3%. So while they both had a pretty high uh, passer rating when running play action, you could argue that Tannehill did rely on it a bit more since, you know, uh, he ran play action over twice as much as Brees did. And Tannehill didn't run it the most out of any quarterback. I mean, even on this list, Cousins was higher than him. But actually what I find really interesting is, uh, go on to this next slide right here. And what you're going to notice is that this is the list of, I did the top 32 quarterbacks in terms of how often they ran play action. And then I figured out what their uh, play action percentage was because there's no uh, chart I could find that actually lists that. So I did the math myself. Uh, and so the way the list works is it's, you know, uh, starts on the left column, goes all the way down, then goes to the right column and goes all the way down. Uh, the first thing you might notice is that Lamar Jackson's passer rating percentage was ridiculously high. Uh, again, that's kind of just because he's such an anomaly of a quarterback. On 40% of his passes, they were play-action passes, which is just crazy. Obviously, the next highest is Cousins at 31.2. You also have Jared Goff at 31.0. Uh, and you notice that uh, the guy who was playing before Tannehill, Mariota, he ran play-action just slightly more than even Tannehill did. So I think that's interesting. So while Tannehill definitely was, you know, top five, and I think you could argue top four because it was one of his teammates that was uh, above him. So if you don't count Mariota, that would put him at top four in terms of passer rating. He's clearly high up there. It's also totally fair to say it's not like he's running play action way more than any of these other guys. But what I find incredibly interesting about this chart and the reason why I wanted to bring it up is because if you notice those asterisks, next to somebody, guys, so you know there's an asterisk next to Tannehill, there's an asterisk next to Lamar Jackson, Kirk Cousins, uh, what you're going to notice is that there's an asterisk on five of the top nine guys and five of the bottom six guys. What those asterisks mean is that if you have an asterisk next to your name, you finished in the top 10 of passer rating while running play action, just in general, not differential or anything. So I find it so crazy that, that you know, if you're in the middle you did not finish up in the top 10. The entire top 10 were either players on teams that ran play action a lot, you know, like Russell Wilson, Jimmy Garoppolo, or teams that didn't do it very much, but picked their moments, like Derek Carr, Jameis Winston, uh, Drew Brees. Uh, I find that very fascinating. So what does this tell me? I think the first thing it tells me is that Obviously, this is overblown. You know, just look at the statistics. It's not like Tannehill can only play uh, with play action. Clearly, it's a big part of uh, Tennessee's team. But if you just look at the numbers, I mean, he's almost virtually the same with Russell Wilson, a guy who uh, many felt like should have uh, gotten MVP votes last year. Kirk Cousins is another guy who's right in that uh, ballpark with Ryan Tannehill. So 
You can make an argument for sure that Tannehill benefited the most from play action last year, but at the same time, that's not necessarily a bad thing. First, let's just talk about why play action works and why it could be considered a negative that Tannehill can only play with play action or why, you know, Tannehill uh, relying on play action could be considered a, a negative part of his game. Like on this play, it's a cover four zone. So this is the ideal time to run play action with a receiver running over the middle. And the reason why play action works so well is because right when the ball is snapped, you notice how far in those linebackers move. They're very far in. They were expecting a run. And especially with it being, you know, the cover four with plenty of defensive backs deep, they really had to make sure they came in to try to stop a potential run. But because of this, now Tannehill has a receiver open behind them, and it's going to be a lot easier for him to make this throw. He's able to wait until the receiver runs, finishes the route, makes a very accurate throw, and they're able to get the first down. Now, nobody would argue against the fact that a well-timed play action makes things a lot easier on the quarterback, and it makes things a lot easier as well when you have a great running back like Henry who can you know, run the ball very well, which means that the more you run play action, teams are going to fall for it more and more times because they have to respect the running game, making the play action that much more valuable. But what I find interesting about Tannehill, more so than any of that, is that I think Tannehill is the ideal quarterback to run play action a bunch with. Because, uh, actually, I I'm going to show a clip. And this is a clip from, I made a video uh, series last offseason where I counted down the top 40 quarterbacks. It was fun, but it took, took a lot of time uh, to make. But I want to bring up one thing that I mentioned uh, at the end of that video, because I find this very uh, interesting when I'm talking about him now. Tannehill sometimes gets a little bit excited and makes some throws that he shouldn't have to do, and he does have a tendency of just making some poor reads from time to time. Not really pre-snap reads, but he'll make some poor post-snap reads from time to time. That's really the main reason he was at 31. I think if he got his post-snap reads down, this guy could easily be a top, at least a top 20 quarterback. So yeah, that's how I felt about Tannehill uh, before he played a, a snap for the Tennessee Titans. In fact, this is before he had even been uh, a, a member of the Tennessee Titans, uh, but I, I, what I find interesting about that is what exactly I said. I said that he's uh, a good physical talent, but he struggles with his reads, specifically post-snap reads. And with the play-action kind of system that they like to run, these post-snap reads are a lot easier to make. Like, take a look at this game against New England, where it's, uh, you know, it's your typical play. Receiver runs over the middle, you run play action, okay? We get it, we understand how it works. And uh, after the ball is snapped, you notice that a New England player is doing a very good job of rushing in, and another one is step stepping back to try to take away that route. They're very well aware of what Tennessee does, so they're trying to make sure that they do take away these type of plays. But now for Tannehill, instead of having to, you know, look at several different things, instead of having to see someone and say, okay, you're kind of open. Do I feel like I can make this throw? I'm not sure. Now we can simply just sit here and say, okay, you did your job. All right, fine. Good job. You beat me on this one. I'm just going to take a check down. And even in this system, because New England is, you know, they're so focused on taking away the player who's running deeper. Uh, when Tannehill does take this check down, they're still going to end up getting nine yards on this play. Also some good running. Uh, but, I mean, you know, it was going to go for a solid gain regardless. And it's just that much easier for Tannehill, someone who has a history of not being the highest IQ football player. But you don't have to be making these incredible decisions with this kind of system. Is Ryan Tannehill a quote-unquote system quarterback? Well, I think he could be okay in just about any system. But he would never thrive if he wasn't in a system like this. But I think that's okay. I do think he probably needs a good running back to really achieve the high heights that he achieved last year. But he achieved really high heights last year. I mean, he led the league in passer rating. And while I do think that play action has to be a huge part of his game for him to really have success, that doesn't necessarily mean that's all he can do. Like on this play, uh, they're at their own two-yard line. So it's kind of a similar idea. You know, the defense could definitely believe that, okay, this is probably going to be a running play. Uh, this isn't actually play action on this one, but there kind of is that element there of, you know, there's a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the sideline with a receiver running deep. That's what Tannehill wants to hit. But what I like about this is just Tannehill's throw. Watch how he takes a couple steps back and is going to make an absolutely perfect throw. You couldn't ask for anything better than that. And he is the kind of guy who can make plays like that. So, uh, listen, is it fair to say that, like, well, you know, I'm not sure if he would have been as good if it wasn't for Derrick Henry and if it wasn't for their play-action game? 
yeah, I think it's fair. I think it's a bit overblown. I mean, it's not like he's the only guy who's benefiting from play action. And the numbers certainly say that it's not like he's overwhelmingly benefiting from play action. I mean, he does have a good differential, but, you know, there's other guys who have better ones. And it's not like he's running it the most, but he does probably have the highest differential of guys who, of, who are also running play action a bunch. But to me, that's okay. You know, he's not Drew Brees or Aaron Rodgers. No one ever accused him of being those guys. He can still be very effective given a certain system, and he can even potentially be a Super Bowl winning quarterback, I think, given the right system and given the right team. And he's in a pretty good system now, and he has a pretty good team. So, again, I'm not saying Super Bowl, but I definitely think the Titans could be very good next year. And I think that it all starts with Ryan Tannehill. So, uh, yeah, that's what I think. Or really, I should say it all starts with the system, but. Well, second line is Tannehill. Uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I kind of like making these, you know, uh, sort of not just about one player, but about one specific topic about a player. I think they're, they can be very fun. I hope you guys enjoy it. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.